Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Just One More Level podcast. I am your co-host, John. And I'm Christian. And this week, we have played Bendy and the Ink Machine, uh, an indie favorite that blew up about four or five years ago, and it was the request of my wife, Amber. She really wanted to yep. see us play this game. Uh, but before we get too far into it, Christian, do you want to talk a little bit about what we got going on? Yeah, so we, we've we been doing this now for, uh, how long has it been, John? Uh, Almost eight, a year. seven months, six months? I think it's been, I don't remember Getting how long, there. but we've been doing this for a little bit while, a little bit while yeah. Wow, while. my brain's working. Uh, but we've been doing this for a little while now, and we just wanted to give back to the community a little bit more as well as get a little bit more engagement going with everybody um, on mm-hmm. our end. So we have something a little special at the end. So stick around and find out more once the uh, we're done talking about Bendy. Yeah. Yeah. So right. Christian, what did you think about this game? Because I have uh, a couple of unique opinions and an actual change in opinion from the first time that I talked to you about it. But I'd love to hear what you think of it. Yeah. So I really enjoyed the game too. To be honest with you, it was mm-hmm. not quite as... So, I mean, I only made it through... I think I finished Chapter 2, I think, if I remember okay. correctly. Um, uh-huh. I th- It may change like later on in the game. Maybe it'll get a little bit more fast-paced or a little bit more uh, intense at points. But really, mm-hmm. it was just kind of a very nice atmospheric experience for the first couple chapters that I played through with some, yeah. some interesting not quite jump scares but just some tense moments right where things would kind of pop out not necessarily like right in front of your face or anything like that but right. i actually quite enjoyed the experience i love the art style too i think that's one of the strongest points of the game the game looks amazing even though it's very brown uh, but yeah. that kind of fits the whole old school animation feel of it so i mean in mm-hmm. summary i thought it was really good but i know i'm, I'm more mm-hmm. interested in hearing what you had to say because when we talked at first about the game you mentioned that you it wasn't your favorite yeah um so initially playing through it i think that maybe it was just a matter of expectations versus reality um Mm, i played through i played through the first chapter and the second chapter and Mm. i felt like maybe i was missing things and i i kind of wanted to i I wanted to completely restart my experience um because the night that i played it i was i I was kind of tired and you know i was i wasn't really even feeling sitting down and playing a game i was just like oh, i gotta get this you know played because of the podcast and everything so i just kind of right. meandered my way through it um so i went back and i replayed the first and second chapter uh with a fresh pair of eyes and altered expectations okay. because when the game first came out unlike a lot of other popular indie horror games i didn't actually watch anyone do let's plays of it mm-hmm. when it came out um i saw a couple of matpat theories about it i think but I wasn't really invested in what was going on. I had always meant to go back and watch people play it and try to figure out what it was all about, but it seemed very face value to me, and I was expecting something much bigger and much darker and scarier than what is actually presented. So when I just kind of meandered my way through it, being all tired and stuff, I was just like, it felt very underwhelming to me. The experience was very under what I was expecting expecting it to be but okay when i can kind of see what you're saying because yeah uh, i kind of had a similar introduction to the game where i i really just watched a couple matpad theories myself uh, uh about the about the game but i don't Mm -hmm. think i maybe had the same expectations going into it as you did yeah I, i was expecting something much more in the line of just because of around when it came out i was expecting something much more in the line of like outlast (laughs) or or something like that i was i was expecting a far darker grittier experience um even fnaf in a way uh, the the subtext of fnaf not the actual gameplay but like the subtext of what's going on in fnaf is much um more gritty and gory than what than you actually see going actually on in the see. games yeah definitely right. um so that's what i was kind of expecting and looking forward to but when i played it through the second time with a fresh set of eyes and readjusted expectations i really like it it's it's Mm -hmm. really really good um like you said it is an experience it's atmospheric um i love that they rendered the entire building in this old art style Um, yeah that's the thing that really really does it for me and i think that was kind of it's it's called a fame whenever it first came out too was the Mm -hmm. unique art style and it came out if i'm not mistaken around the same time that cuphead was blowing 
up uh, was around the same time that this was. Yeah, so there's just this sudden, sudden burst of old animation style games. And I'm all mm-hmm. for it, man. I haven't played much Cuphead. Maybe it's something we'll do on the podcast sooner or later. But yeah. this whole... So, I mean, we're we're both, you know, 20s, uh, mid to mm-hmm. late 20s. So we didn't really have like that that black and white experience that these are kind of based off of. Or even Cuphead where, you know, the, the original kind of color experience. We were a right. little bit too young for that by the time we were out we I had did, a little bit better animation I did a going little on. bit yeah it was on bit. tv every now and sure. then or, or yeah. some old vhs tapes that our parents were yeah. had or whatever but it wasn't right. like our main sort of thing but it, it, there's no. something still comforting about those art styles to me though uh even yeah. though it's not necessarily what i grew up with and I just, mm-hmm. I'm all for it. It's it's so good looking. Everything's slightly cell shaded, uh, mm-hmm. very brown, uh, mm-hmm. and just kind of it calls back to old Disney kind of Mickey Mouse style animations, which I think is kind of what Bendy was meant to look kind of like. If I'm not mistaken, because yeah. I mean, you have well, Bendy, that... who's kind of a mouse-like creature. Do they ever say what he's just a little he's... demon or devil, isn't he? He's he's a devil, yeah. Which yeah. is um. That's Matt Pat's very first theory about the about the game, which yeah. is something that I've actually rewatched uh, recently, and what I remember I watching have. back in the day. Um, well, he he compares it to um, Betty Boop. Betty oh, Boop, yeah, okay. orig- originally was a part of a duo. Mm-hmm. There was a little dog, a little mischievous dog character that would get himself into trouble, and his girlfriend was Betty Boop. And then Betty Boop ended up overtaking him in popularity, and he was kind of scrubbed from from the cartoons. But so a lot of Bet- parallels here, then, yeah. I see yeah, what you're but um, the uh, that animation studio that was making Betty Boop and all that kind of stuff was in direct competition to Walt Disney. He mm-hmm. was the person that pioneered a lot of the things that Walt Disney is kind of given credit for. Right. And he right. was operating out of New York, whereas Disney was operating out of Hollywood. And uh, everybody flocked to Disney eventually just because right. of his his expert marketing tactics yeah. and um the original guy was just kind of scrubbed out of existence so matt pat thinks that because of what we see here in the game we see a dilapidated a animation studio we see that some time has passed and obviously this isn't operating anymore so that's what um that's what his theory was was about well, not there. only that but you have you have bendy who's a i guess in this game right. not a dog but more of a, a a little devil or a little demon or whatever but you do right. also have a female character that they they mention uh yes. thinking it's gonna blow up and it's gonna be the next big thing and whatnot so right. yeah, I think there are a lot of parallels there. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't know a whole lot about like Betty Boop history, but you do also have Boris, which I know there's other games by this game studio featuring Boris, uh, who yeah. is a goofy like character, kind right. of that that dog like shape uh, and kind of like mm-hmm. silly in the way he seems to be portrayed and things like that. So right. a lot of parallels with with just old animation in general, I guess, whether it be you know Betty Boop in that studio and then or uh, uh, Disney, but right. either way, like I was saying, I'm just, I'm here for it. It, it looks amazing. The mm-hmm. the soundtrack too, I thought was pretty great. It's uh, yeah. It really sets the theme, it sets the feel for the game. And mm-hmm. it's kind of surprising to me how much of a following from younger audiences this game has to be honest yeah yeah it's, uh go ahead i'm sorry I would, i'll let you i i, I was just going to say i would just kind of chalk it up to the reason that so many of these beloved characters became popular in the first place um huh. it's just you know like a recognizable mascot and sure. the the game is creepy but accessible enough that yeah, it's, it's would... creepy but it's not there's no like proper gore or anything like that it's, right it's yeah. there's everything is ink based and whatnot so exactly even whenever yeah. things are like broken down and and damaged or or hurt or whatever you're not like mm-hmm. bleeding having proper limbs fall off it's all kind of yeah inky. it's all <laughs> it, it's it's yeah which is something from film history actually i yeah. was just i i was talking about this last night i watched uh, one of the evil dead movies and um somebody asked me why 
there's different colors of gore in the movie. Why isn't it all blood? And that was because the ratings board at the time, they were threatening with giving the movie an X rating, which today would be an NC-17, unless they toned down the gore. But he didn't want to lose those sequences. So instead, there was black goop and blue and green and orange. And it was all the viscosity of blood and happening where blood should happen. (laughs) But it was different colors. So They did that that a lot in video games as well a lot right. in video games like uh having right. calling uh things aliens for instance even if they looked human calling them aliens and having them do like right. green blood instead of red or whatever and like yeah. robots and things like that they couldn't have red coming out of them it had to be like a black oil substance or or whatever or like you said they would be given mm-hmm. an adult or near adult rating like a mature rating or something like that and if you're trying right. to sell a product whether it be movies television shows games whatever to a wide audience Mm -hmm. obviously most people want to hit that kind of e for everyone kind of thing or maybe teen seems to be a popular destination as well yeah so that's that's a good way to get around that parents probably aren't too fussed by the darker themes because it's uh, it's you know it's cartoons and it's ink and it's it's just kind of creepy it's fine Um, and honestly at the same time it kind of makes me think too that if more parents had played this game i I mean i guess that's true for a lot of movies and videos and and games and things but i feel like this game is darker than what most parents would probably credit it with if they had just seen the cover of the game because yeah. I feel like there's probably going to be a sense of familiarity and, and, and you know, feeling like it's a little bit safe seeing these cute cartoon characters on the front and whatnot. And right. then if they were to actually play the game and see what the themes were, uh, I think yeah. they would be a little bit surprised. But, yeah. eh, you know. <laughs> so I played a little bit further along in the game than you did. I played the entirety of Chapter 3. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. And I, I actually had uh, a couple of frustrating issues with Chapter 3. Um, really? I, I ran, yeah, I ran into uh, apparently a very rare game-breaking glitch. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> it was, uh, it, I had to completely restart Chapter 3, even though I was all the way at the end. Um, that sucks yeah but it was uh the uh there's there's a villain in chapter three called the projectionist uh he's a monster um and if you are running from him Mm -hmm. and you go to hide in one of the closets at the wrong time like if if he's so close to you that he's about to attack and you hide in the closet as he's attacking it's this so such a split second thing it breaks the game and he stays in an attack like he he stays on the constant attack and you can't complete the mission it um it resets like okay this is this is kind of complex to talk about without actually going into the game and talking about what it's even about um because so far we've just we've just touched on atmosphere and how we feel about it but let's let's go into a little bit of the story before i start giving away spoilers and some nonsense right. um <laughs> so the the storyline um as you can see is you play as a character named henry who mm-hmm. apparently worked with joey drew who owns the animation studio 30 years right. ago you mm-hmm. worked at this place and helped create these characters 30 years ago and for whatever reason you left it's possible that gets divulged in the story um in a later chapter but i'm not right. sure i I imagine um, it probably would, but right. it's hard to say when you only play the first hour or so. Right. So you um, you left the studio, and you get an invitation to come back 30 years later. And when you do, you find the studio in ruin and various states of disrepair, and there's this mysterious ink machine. And mm-hmm. when you turn on the ink machine, uh, things start coming to life. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, yeah. You meet the, the, the main series antagonist, which is Bendy, the ink demon. Um, he, he chases you in different parts of the game, and... And then you fall through a hole in the floor when you're trying to escape and you get locked in the the bowels of this very expanded animation studio. Uh, yeah. Your character, yeah. Actually <laughs> makes, your, your character actually makes a comment on how much has changed since you left and how much bigger the place is. And he has no idea how true that is because down underneath of the studio, there's a whole lot more to explore. So, yeah, it just goes and goes and goes. It's unrealistically yeah. large. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's the size of an underground compound on Resident Evil. Yeah. Like yeah. It's huge. Yeah. Essentially. Um, 
but you uh that's where chapter one ends and the different chapters so far have been themed around a certain aspect of the animation or a certain character um Mm -hmm. chapter two is totally themed around the music making process for the bendy cartoons uh chapter three is completely themed around alice angel and Mm. uh to some extent boris and then uh spoiler alert i haven't played chapter four yet but at the end of chapter three uh boris who ends up showing up as an actual character gets kidnapped and you you have to go okay. you have to go rescue him that is the okay. macguffin of chapter four that's your your initial goal um so moving through chapter two chapter two is what really sold it for me because chapter one really fed into that underwhelming feeling that i was having and uh chapter two there's a lot more gameplay uh chapter yeah. one is just an introduction you're just exploring gathering little bits of story and yeah really that's soaking in the, the environment. whole puzzle of chapter one is just walk around explore the environment collect things yeah that's that's it for chapter one chapter one really is just kind of a a walking exploring sort of thing chapter mm-hmm. two is where they start to introduce some puzzles mm-hmm. uh, relatively light puzzles but there are some puzzle elements and i i would imagine that mm-hmm. chapter three four and so on would just kind of increase from there and the the level of difficulty and and number of puzzles and things like that right so chapter Chapter one like you said is really just all about the atmosphere right um chapter three is very fetch quest oriented um Mm. you explore a different part of the facility and uh i mean you wake up in boris's safe house and then you go explore and um you run into alice angel and then she sends you on fetch quests on the different levels of the facility and while while you're doing these you uncover a lot of lore and uh learn about some different mechanics and different enemies that you may have to fight and you have to constantly watch out for bendy um if you Mm -hmm. make if you make too much noise or you don't hide in the closets enough um it will trigger bendy to come out and start chasing you and there's no way to fight bendy you just have to hide so right um that is a mechanic i assume will be more incorporated going forward the only time that you encounter bendy other than that is at the end of chapter one and the end of chapter two he's kind of a jump scare thing that you have to run from but gotcha Gotcha. i really i really liked uh chapter two i like the music thing i like that um the villain sammy lawrence who is uh was the original music director turned into an ink monster um yeah is yeah. Kind, kind of, of went insane and yeah he, he he goes insane and and starts this cult that worships bendy yeah. <laughs> um and he he's planning on sacrificing you to bendy but um yeah his plans are foiled because bendy is actually after him and is just kind of using you as bait question mark not really sure right and i think that was kind of one of the theories that matt pat was kind of going on was who's actually bad and who's Mm-hmm. not in the in the games because mm-hmm. um, you don't really know like bendy seems to be coming after you but is bendy actually evil or is that just some sort of uh, i don't i can't think of the right word but some sort of scapegoat misdirection kind of yeah right so there's a lot of questions about what is really going on here yeah because i mean don't... that's kind of the whole point anyways whenever you come here as an old employee you were invited and then you show up and everything's kind of in ruins so that's kind of the mindset of the character as well it's just like what the hell is going on yeah because you never really die if you get attacked by there's like little uh like grunt enemies ink monsters that, yeah link ink monsters um, yeah yeah little ink monsters that can attack you and then later on there's more uh cartoon monsters that you fight and then of course bendy and um if any of those attack you to the point where you lose all of your health you don't die you go into this inky void and if yeah. you press your way through the void towards the light you just pop out at some other part of uh the the, the ink factory and then you right. just kind of keep going wherever you left off um so, yeah, so it's hard to say. Is that just like for gameplay reasons or did they do that because Bendy's story reasons, right. you know, like, yeah, we don't. That's the sort of thing we'd have to finish the game to find out. Right. But that's not our that's not our shtick. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But yeah, it's uh, it's it's really interesting and it causes you to keep wanting to move forward to uncover more of the mystery. That's what yeah. is really nice about this game is that. It doesn't spell everything out for you. It's episodic, so you have to play the next episode. You have to uncover the next thing in order to completely solve all the mysteries. There's just a lot of Mm -hmm. hints through dialogue and through tape recorders and things like that that you find in this place and that piques your interest and it wants you to keep moving. Um, 
Um, there's also Easter eggs and secret areas, um, hidden Steam achievements. Actually, I think all the Steam achievements are hidden until you actually get them in the game. Um, I haven't I actually looked. Yeah. Um, One of the... I'm, I imagine it's linked to some sort of Easter egg or something like that. I noticed mm-hmm. as I was exploring around that there's like cans of Bendy-themed beans all over yeah, the place. Yeah, bacon soup. And you... Yeah, bacon soup. That's it, not Those... beans. Uh, but anyways, you can collect them or eat right. them or something. Right. But there doesn't seem to be any point to it. They... So I'm wondering... I've collected every one I found. Yeah, they play into Chapter 3. They are health items. Uh, okay. Um, oh, okay. okay. So if you're if Some... you're on the run from Bendy and he attacks you you can quickly grab one and you successfully hide and there happens to be some laying around so you can eat them to regain your see i thought maybe they were some sort of health item but there was so many of them and you don't really take damage in the first chapter right so i was like (laughs) what are these even what what, what's going on here (laughs) yeah yeah so i didn't know if they were some sort of easter egg or what those were but that makes sense though i think that maybe they're left all over the place because in chapter three also you uh cook them in a pot for boris in the mm, safe house okay. so <laughs> maybe course, yeah. Bor- boris is leaving all these laying around because he likes to eat them <laughs> I don't, i'm not really sure uh, but um it's it's really interesting i i love the gameplay i love the art style the music mm-hmm. um the only thing that's just a little bit lacking on the gameplay is i wish there was more of it um i, I kind of wish it was just a little bit more developed like maybe a an inventory system so that you can kind of uh, see sure. what's going on. Yeah. I think it would be cool if you could actually collect those cans of bacon soup. and Instead could, of just using them instantly. Yeah, yeah. so that you could kind of use them as a health item um, whenever you need to. Um, there's a, a whole gimmick in Chapter 3 where when Alice Angel sends you on these quests, she gives you different weapon types based on what you need to be doing. And mm, I think okay. I think it would be cooler if you could uh, find those weapons and hold on to them and rotate them according to what you need i think that would be more right. engaging for the player as an experience you know you could uh yeah say like oh well this right here this doesn't call for this i need to get my axe out or i need to get my my pipe out for this one you know instead It'd make of, it more puzzly as well yeah 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 um but instead it just kind of leads you directly from point a to point b every time um it like like Alice Angel says, I need you to find these specific creatures, use this specific weapon on them, and then come back to me. So right. I feel like I, I would have liked more variants, more gameplay. <laughs> so but, I wonder if that had more to do with making the game more accessible. True. Especially for like y- the younger audience and things like that. That yeah. kind of seems to be the main audience of this game. Mm -hmm. Uh, I wonder if that's kind of why, like if that was an intentional decision to kind of please that market a little bit more, because I agree with you. I think that would have been great to have an inventory system to give it even more puzzly elements to make it a little bit more engaging. I I definitely agree with you there. But at the same time, I can imagine that for, for younger people or people who don't generally play very many video games, Mm -hmm. this sort of gameplay would probably be more fitting, more suitable, where it is just kind of, you know, here's what you got. You have everything you need. Go out and do stuff. Right. But yeah. eh. And, and, and that's, and that's true. And that's good for, good for them. You know, that's yeah. (laughs) Cause they, they made it work. It sold. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, it even has merch and things like that now, which yeah. I'm, mm-hmm. is where a lot of things really make their money. Right. Uh, I don't know. I don't think it's as much of a thing for video games as it is for like movies and things like that. But yeah. obviously, that's where a lot of forms of media really yeah. bring in the profits is by selling toys to all the children or collectibles right. to adults and things like that. So, well, yeah, I mean, it, it depends on the game. Like, uh, the, the 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 three games that I've seen the most merch for in a normal store that's not like GameStop or FYE right, is right. Minecraft, Five Nights at Freddy's, and Bendy and the Ink Machine. Bendy and so, the Ink Machine, yeah. Um, that's that's what I've seen the most of, other than like I don't know Mario, some some retro oh, vintage type stuff. But, right, Mario, Pokemon. Uh, right. th- I mean, you have the the massive things, but right, it's 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 awesome to see too, just indie games in general being represented at things like Walmart for instance right so the fact that that i mean minecraft is huge it's massive at this point yes it's an indie game or at least started out as one Mm -hmm. but it's the one of the largest selling if not largest selling games of all time right um i think it is the biggest selling game of all time unless Mm -hmm. you include whole franchises anyways getting on a tangent but then something like bendy which was made by a small team or uh 
Five Nights at Freddy's, which of course was made by an even smaller, just the one developer, Scott Cawthon, originally. Right. Yeah. To see those really blow up like that is just awesome to me. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, we both love indie games and the indie scene and whatnot. So yeah. I just love seeing people succeed like that. And to be able to walk into a Walmart and just see Five Nights at Freddy's merch, even if it's not my favorite game series or whatever, that's still just, mm-hmm. that's awesome. Yeah. Um, But I would play just one more level. In fact, I plan to finish this game because it's a relatively short game. I think I read that if, you, if you're just doing main objectives, you can knock this thing out in a couple hours. Um, mm, okay. Now that all five chapters are available. I think when I played through it the second time, the first chapter only took me maybe 20 minutes. And then the second chapter only took me like 40 so if yeah you, if that's you know, the same i think it took me like 30 and 40 but yeah yeah so if you know what you're doing and you just kind of go towards the main objective then this is a less than five hour gameplay experience and then you can replay it to your heart's desire and find all the secrets that you missed and that sort of thing right. so i definitely plan on finishing this uh what, 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 what about you yeah, no, I I do plan on playing just one more chapter, uh, probably more. At some point, I will most likely complete the game. Mm-hmm. I didn't have the same sort of reaction to it that we did with the last couple of games where I like instantly put it on my list of things that I right. want to play very soon. Yeah. But it is definitely a game that I want to complete at some point or at least finish at some point because it's an yeah. enjoyable experience and I want to know more about the story. So, I mean, yeah, for that's, sure. that's the big thing I've been avoiding. I've been very tempted, but I've been avoiding watching, I don't know, Markiplier or Jack Septicai play through chapter four just because I want to know what happens. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'll play it. Yeah, I'll do I it. I want to be surprised when it happens. Yeah, I, exactly. I'll be, I'll be surprised by myself and then I can finish all the MatPat theories because that's there you go. <laughs> that's what we're really in this for. Um, uh-huh. So before we get into uh, the games that we're going to be playing over the next couple of weeks, you want to round back to what we were talking about at the beginning? Yeah. So as I kind of mentioned at the beginning, we want to give back to the community as well as as, uh, I mean, just honestly drive more engagement for both on our end as well as from you guys. Mm-hmm. So we decided that we would do a giveaway, essentially. that That's the big thing. I don't Ooh. think it's any huge secret at this point. Yeah, <laughs> but we wanted, to, we wanted to give back. We wanted to give away a copy of Bendy and the Ink Machine since that's what we are covering this week. Yep. So uh, we have a little giveaway link. It's a Gleam.io link. I'm sure a lot of people have seen those before. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, it's uh, you just follow the link. You log in with whatever you want to log in with, mm-hmm. and then you just do simple things like visit the YouTube channel, visit our Facebook page. And every time you do one of those things, it'll give you entries into the giveaway. And Mm -hmm. at the end of the the time limit, which I believe we have set to the end of the month, if I'm not mistaken, Mm -hmm. then we will draw a name. Gleam.io handles all that for us. It'll draw a name and then we will send you a copy of Bendy and the Ink Machine on Mm itch.io. So Uh, You don't need to give us anything special. We just need your email address and we'll send that on over. And then you redeem it on there and you'll get a copy of Bending the Ink Machine on Steam, as well as, I believe, just a downloadable copy, if I'm not mistaken, as well. So if you don't have a Steam account or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, The only thing I'm not sure about, I don't know with itch.io how like other countries and things work. We'll we'll attempt to send it to whoever. Everybody's free to join no matter what country you're from. But we can't guarantee that itch.io, like if I buy it, here in america where we live Mm -hmm. if you live in say germany i don't know like how if it'll provide a localized copy in german or anything like that Mm -hmm. so just just uh, beware if you do enter from other countries that yeah not 100 percent sure how that'll work but regardless uh if you guys check it out we do appreciate it and we hope if you win you enjoy bendy and the ink machine yeah uh, and uh, yeah i hope you enjoy it as much as uh, i'm starting to um i'm really getting into it like I, and if that tells you anything i ran into that game breaking glitch as i was talking about earlier and I'll, I'll go into a little bit more detail one of the ink monsters is the former projectionist and he turns into the projectionist monster i don't really uh, know. that makes sense <laughs> I, don't, I don't really right. know what you call him but he's uh he's just an ink monster with a big uh film projection like device thing on on his head film projection device thing that's what they're officially called um, yeah yeah officially that's he, their name. he's got a he's got a projector on his head and he has a field of vision that's just projection light and you have to stay out of the light whilst uh collecting items around him um 
So you have to use a little bit of stealth to try to hide from him. And he was attacking me and I was running from him and I went to hide and he was still attacking me even though I was clearly hidden. And for some reason, my counts of items that I had went from four to five, even though I hadn't found the last one. And I was like, (laughs) uh, oh, okay, I must have found them all. Okay. So I restarted the game and it started me outside of it, but it still said I had the five items. So I was like, oh, okay. That, That was just a little glitch. I'm fine. But when I went back to Alice Angel, I could not deposit them the way I had deposited gotcha. all of the other fetched items, and the game was broken. That's rough. So I had but to you went replay. back and redid it because you were enjoying the game. Yes. I was saying. enjoying the yeah. game so okay. much that I was willing to totally yeah. restart the chapter to get to the end goal because I want to continue playing it, and I want to gotcha. see where the story goes. So come on out and check out our YouTube channel. Check out that link. Uh, the link's going to be in, you said, the YouTube description, and I believe also on our Twitter and Facebook and on our website. Yeah, Twitter, Facebook, the website, of course, and uh, as well as whatever pro- podcast platform, it should be in the description for the episode if you if you just listen to the podcast as well. Right. So um, so that uh, segues us into, of course, the, uh, the, the ending bits here. But first, next week, we'll be playing this lovely little game <laughs> called <laughs> uh shenzhen dot not shenzhen dot io shenzhen io or on yeah. off i believe it's supposed to symbolize yeah it's like input output on off sort yeah. of thing yeah um, um yeah honestly it was a game i added because i'm a programmer i, I went to school for programming and it's something that i quite enjoy and right. shenzhen io is a game all about programming kind of in assembly and honestly i thought john would hate it but I knew that it was my sort of game, so I yeah. thought I'd add it to the list because it would be funny, as yeah. well as I just want to play a bit of it. Um, right. So so we got that one. We're going to be doing that real soon. And then mm-hmm. right after that actually was uh, a game John picked, Alien Isolation. Yes. We'll be doing. I'm and, so excited uh, for that one. If, for anybody who's been following us for a while, you may notice that our schedule is a little bit messed up. Mm-hmm. So we had some things going on uh, just, you know, in, in real life. So we, we ended up missing a week. So we might end up doubling up on episodes at some point. We haven't mm-hmm. fully decided how to get back on schedule yet. But yeah. uh, there may be a week with two episodes here soon. Mm-hmm. But regardless, those are the next two games that we'll be doing. And then just real quick, I want to shout out the poll over on JustOneMorePodcast.com. Because yes. after Alien Isolation, we will be playing the next poll winner. Mm-hmm. Right now, Middle Earth Shadow of mordor and lego star wars the playstation 2 version are kind of tied for Mm -hmm. for top uh billing there so Mm -hmm. just uh, get in your votes and we will be playing one of those in just a few weeks so come out come out i think the poll has yeah by the time this goes up i think the poll has five or six days left so Uh not too much longer but come out and vote get your mountain vote vote for lego star wars let's get that to the top (laughs) That's you my can't, vote. You We're can't so close. push people to vote for a specific one, John. We're so close. That, Come that, on, guys. That skews the audience. Come out and vote for whatever you want us to play. Yes. Okay? Don't listen to John. Just whatever you want. Right. Um, but yeah, there's some good choices on there, so vote on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for that. John, where can we find you? You can find me currently on the Just One More podcast website and the Just One More Level podcast yes. YouTube channel, of course, uh, or wherever yep. you get your podcasts from. We actually have a wide reach of, of where you can get your podcasts. We don't talk about that too much, but we're available on, uh, yeah. what is it, Google Podcast, Acast, uh, iHeartRadio. Yep. Um, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, some lesser yeah. known things like Deezer, um, mm-hmm. all over the place. I think Tune.in is another one that we're available on. Yeah. If we if we actually get to the point to where we have a, a larger following, we're looking into things like Spotify and Amazon and things like that as well. Right. But those services kind of cost some money to get onto. So yeah. right now this is more just a hobby. So right. we're uh, we're looking into it, but that's kind of future, maybe someday. Right. <laughs> so yeah, come and check us out on on w- whatever platform would be you know easiest for you to listen on. And right. If we also and if have we're social missing media. one that you would want us on, let us know. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt John there, but no, like obviously we don't know every podcasting platform every social media platform out there so if there's one that you would really like to see us on give us a shout out you know we'll make an only fans if that's what you want yeah Uh, just let us know myspace (laughs) myspace is still a thing and it's actually geared towards music and podcast now 
It's not. There we go. Maybe, <laughs> just a social maybe network. we'll be at MySpace here soon. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> other than that, uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter and on Instagram at uh, the Dorse Man. Um, I haven't right. done much on my YouTube channel lately, but uh, that is also the Dorse Man. If you want to go show that some love, um, I, I do have some plans for the future, but I'm not going to write anything in stone. Um, right. And of course, I uh, I help run the Just One More podcast Facebook group, and yep. you should definitely go and check that out because that's the best place that we can engage with people directly on um, getting comments and suggestions for future poll games uh, that you mm-hmm. want. That's where we give updates about when we're going live and recording episodes next and different things like that. So come and check us right. out on there. But in the meantime, Christian, where can we find you? Yeah, so you can find me obviously on Twitch and our website. Um, I plan on getting back into YouTube and things a little bit at some point, but like John, I'm not going to set anything into stone because mm-hmm. personal life is just a little bit too busy to really do as much as i want to do yeah we but got uh, stuff i going do on. plan on getting back to, yeah <laughs> i plan on getting into twitch more again i know i say that every week mm-hmm. but so just quick story time what's been going on i'm trying to build a new computer mm-hmm. my computer is old it didn't quite have the specs that i wanted especially while trying to also record and stream and things like that mm-hmm. and i've been planning an upgrade for a while so i finally i finally did it i finally upgraded my pc i got all the parts but as anybody who's into PCs know right now, it's impossible to get graphics cards. It was yeah. hard enough just to get a just to get a CPU mm-hmm. for my computer. Graphics cards are just impossible. So I'm still running my, you know, eight year old GPU right now. Mm-hmm. So like performance is better, but it's still not quite to where I want it to be. But I am finally set up to a point to where at least older games and things that like what I was playing before, I should be able to do a little bit more smoothly. So I'm going to try to get on Twitch a little bit more again. Um, but other than that, I do also have the the Twitter accounts. Uh, I have the, the, the YouTube accounts and and, and like John said, the the website and Facebook pages, of course, come check right. us out there. So yeah, and uh, yeah. It's story time for me. I've uh, I've I've recently become stricken with the illness, <laughs> so um, <laughs> that has that that uh, that has dampened things uh, a good bit. Makes but, it a bit um, harder to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but we're 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 getting there. We're getting everything figured out, and we really appreciate you guys sticking with us. Uh, we have a pretty small but engaged. audience audience and we really appreciate that we really appreciate your support because you don't have to but you do and we thank you for it that's the biggest reason why we wanted to do this giveaway um if that's something you guys enjoy uh and you'd like to see more stuff like that in the future let us know um check out those all those social media things that we talk about every week and our website and things like that check us out and engage with us and let us know what you'd like to see uh what games you'd like us to play and how you're feeling about everything we'd like to hear more from you exactly but that's all we have time for this week hopefully we see mm-hmm. you again either at the end of this week or next week or however we decide to do that right. of course the best place to find out whenever episodes go live and thing is twitter and facebook pages so make sure you follow us on there yep but we'll see you all again soon yep bye-bye bye-bye y'all